I'm going to take you through a little tour of the overview of the screen. Some of the places you're going to find buttons, functions, where they're going to take you. And if you have questions, the help button is always right at your fingertips. So I'm going to just kind of take you through a little tour. You're going to see me touching different things. I'll show you how to scroll and really get comfortable with what and where these menus are. So as you go forward through these videos, you'll see where I'm going, why I'm getting there, and you can always come back here for reference. So starting up in this top corner, you do notice that there is a tension, and that tension will be set up based on what stitch you pick. So if I choose different stitches, you're gonna notice that number is gonna change, kind of get you into the ballpark. Now it's not necessarily, not what I call an automatic tension, but it does get you into the right settings because it do still doesn't know what thread you're using in your needle and bobbin. But from there, you can adjust it. So if I touch tension, you're gonna notice I'm gonna get a screen, and there's multiple ways to change things. First off, here I can touch and drag. Notice things change into yellow coloring when we have changed them. I could also do plus or minus, and I can also turn the knob over here on this side. I can actually turn either one of the straight of the stitch length or the stitch width knobs, and that will turn it fairly quickly up or down. Now, anything that's yellow, you can touch again and will return you back to a default setting, kind of turning off any changes you've made. I'm going to go ahead and leave that, go to X out of that screen. This one is going to be where it will tell you your presser foot display, tell you which foot it recommends. So for example, stitch three is an overlock stitch, so it recommends a 2A or overlock foot. The next one down is pressure, so we can actually see what the pressure is, and that will change based on what fabric you pick. That will be done down here in the dress form area or the sewing consultant or creative consultant, excuse me. And um, next is our, it says nine millimeter. This will be where you change for if you put a double needle, wing needle, triple needle, or a different throat plate instead of the nine millimeter, the one that came with the machine is a straight stitch throat plate. That will limit all the stitches, so when I pick a zigzag, all I'm going to get is a straight stitch because it won't let me go side to side. I love that feature that it will stay on when I turn the machine off. So if I'm going back to the nine millimeter throat plate, go ahead and touch what, which one you have and then confirm that. Then it'll let you pick your zigzags and things. Okay, down here we have where we can lower the, the feed dogs. It, it's not where we lower them. It's actually what tells us if we need to lower them or not. It'll kind of turn orange if we do. Our bobbin sensor, so you will be notified as you get low on your bobbin. This is a home, so when you're going between sewing and embroidery, and you can, I don't have the embroidery unit on, but you can come over here and go into the embroidery side. You can look at the designs and pick them and even do something with them. You can move it around and so forth, make it bigger, make it smaller. You just won't be able to embroider them, obviously. And so to get back, we'll just touch home and return back to the sewing part of our machine. Once we're back here, we'll just kind of keep going on. This is a, like a settings menu. This is going to be where you can personalize the machine for the way you sew. If you don't want it to beep every time you touch the screen or if you need uh, different settings for different parts, we'll go into a whole video on just the setup part of the machine. Next is a tutorial. Looks like a little picture of a book. Some basics are built into the machine, such as like how to do buttonholes. Well, what kind of buttonholes? How about corded buttonholes? Again, we'll do a video on each of these so you'll get to see it as we go, but a really nice remembering where that is. Next is the creative consultant where you can actually tell it which fabric you're working on. So if you're working on something stretchy like a fleece and then we pick a stitch, it will tell us which stitch to use, what settings, what needle, and when you touch the green check mark, it'll actually take you to the right stitch, set the pressure, set the tension, and you'll be all ready to sew. I love that. We're gonna go into that again in a different video altogether. The next thing is, is the question mark. At any time you can touch it, you'll notice a little question mark bubble will come up and you can actually touch a stitch or a function and it'll tell you what that actually means. Sometimes it's so hard to know when you go to look it up in the manual what it's called so you don't even know how to look it up. And so that question mark will help you give you an idea on that. The echo 
go button, you'll notice that the screen goes blank and actually my sewing light has also turned off. So it'll retain all your settings like it's turned off, kind of like a screen saver. You don't have to use it, but it is kind of nice. It makes people think that your machine is not on and when it doesn't look like it's on, people don't touch it, so love that. Another thing here, we have clear, so any settings that were altered and were yellow, I just cleared them out by touching that one time. Now notice we're on stitch number 19, so if I want to get back to a straight stitch, what I want you to do is just touch, hold, and drag down. This is going to be the fastest way to go. Some people will touch and then you get the stitch and you don't always get it. I want you to touch, hold, push up or down. My stylus has not left the screen and I can slide down. Just because I've touched a stitch doesn't mean it will select it, but I can come back and whatever is showing right here will be the stitch that you will be stitching. So even though I'm not on a stitch selected, I'm way down here, notice I'm still on a straight stitch. So keep your eye in the stitch area so to know what stitch you're actually doing. So how about the side over here? So you have your main stitches, like your main um, menu area. The next one down, the little kind of uh, squiggly line <laughs> or decorative stitch. This takes you into your decorative stitch folders where you can come in here, open this up. Now, when you open this up, you notice you only see nine stitches at a time. So if we all open it all the way back up, you can see more of that menu at a glance just by touching this little kind of fly out menu to this side here. And then we can touch it and go back. There we go. Next are alphabets. So we have a variety of American alphabets in there and buttonholes. So look, have I picked a buttonhole? No. Uh, this straight stitch, if I sew right now, I'll still get a straight stitch even though I'm on the buttonhole menu. So not until we actually change that do we get the actual stitch. The next one is your quilt menu. So all the stitches that are oriented to quilters, they all hang out in their own special menu. And the next one is our personal memory, where you can actually save stitches for the way you like to sew them, kind of create your own memory, or menu, I should say. It's like making, instead of having all the stitches every which way, you can kind of make your own grouping of stitches and it'll save them. Once again, that'll be something that we do a little bit later. Over here, the I for information. I'm gonna just take us back to a straight stitch. I for information will give us more things related to this stitch. You'll notice from time to time, things are grayed out, meaning those are things that you do not need for that stitch. They only let you pick things that are obviously for that stitch. Saving a stitch, mirror image, making it stitch only a certain amount of repeats, a locking stitch, um, making it longer uh, without changing the density. We'll do all of these throughout all the videos on this machine. So as you can see, you've got lots of different things. The little plus here would open up the memory. So if you notice your screen disappears, and you have no stitch, you've opened up a memory, and that means that if we were to pick a stitch, let's find something that actually looks like it, and you start picking stitches and they show up in a row, I've picked two, it says two of two, that is the memory being open. If you touch the plus again, that will close it back down, but once again, if I go back in there, that is uh, in there. Um, we, so we'll just go ahead and leave that out and we'll go ahead and oh one last thing we have needle up needle down So whichever way that needle is pointing that is the way the needle will always stop when you're sewing your numbers here for uh, needle position, stitch width, and stitch length, depending again on which stitch you actually have selected at any given time. So you'll see these throughout their videos, do practice them, and you do have that little quick reference sheet with some of the more basics. But remember, you always have the question mark if you forget what something is.